Hi everyone, we apologize for not uploading a broadcast before fall break. Two of our members were quarantined, <clears throat> so we were delayed. It's our first week in the second quarter and we have some topics to share with you. We have some footage from homecoming night, some information about sports, and more. I'm Brianna Long and I'll be your host today. We welcome you back to Central News Now. over a recap of what happened before fall break. Specifically speaking, homecoming and football. September 24th was homecoming night in Central's football team's playoff against the Clinton Dragons. They won 20 to 15. Just to note, this was football's first homecoming win in seven years, so massive kudos to the team. Out of the 12 total candidates who were selected to compete for homecoming king and queen, only two remained. All right, my name is Tyler Lee. I'm not knowing 52 the football number. Come support us on the football team. As always, go follow my YouTube channel. I'm just playing. The question was asked uh, who I voted for homecoming king and queen. It took careful consideration for real, for real, because I had a few boys on there, on there. But, I, you know, I had to go with Mike because, you know, we're on the football team. He's a leader, you know what I'm saying? And then for queen, I had to go with little mini me, Jeanette. You know, I had to, you know what I'm saying, because I, I promised. Homecoming King was crowned to Michael Watson, and Homecoming Queen was crowned to Chloe Barbie. Once again, let's put our hands together. Homecoming Queen is Chloe Hosa Barbie. In other previous events, Spirit Week also happened, and here's some footage of the students dressing up. Love it, get it! The blood drive occurred on October 1st, hosted by our wonderful JROTC program. In terms of sports, there wasn't a lot going on this week, so we'll spend time during our sports segment to explain what happened before the break. Now moving on to upcoming weather. Just to let you know, these broadcasts are pre-recorded, so in case you didn't know, this type of information is subject to change. Hello, hello, behind the scenes guy here just popping in because as of Thursday, October 21st, the weather has changed. So as of Saturday, you still have sunny skies, but once you get into Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you're starting to look at more chances for rain. Uh, as you see here through the chart, on Monday, you have a chance for scattered thunderstorms as well as Wednesday. The temperatures seem to maintain a high aspect between the high 70s, getting close to even 80 on Sunday, kind of giving that uh, spring-like weather. Uh, but that is, of course, uh, soon to fade as October progresses, as Brianna states in a second. So just to give a heads up, that's the new update. Anyways, carrying forward. The Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday following look about the same as we progress through October. If you haven't considered it already, now might be a good time to suit up for the impending gold. That's right, summer is gone. Yes. <laughs> Bell. <laughs> Bell. <laughs> it's now time to talk about sports. This week wasn't filled with much anything, but there's a football game tonight against the East Ridge Pioneers. On the 27th of September, volleyball went against Brainerd and won 2-0. On the same day, girls soccer went against Sunny Daisy and, unfortunately, lost. The following week, girls soccer went against East Ridge and Sequoia. We were quarantined during that time, so we couldn't record footage, sadly. Coming to a close, we want to end the broadcast reporting on an issue that's occurring worldwide, that being supply shortages. According to many mainstream news outlets such as CNBC, CBS, BBC, and more, Supply shortages are becoming more prominent than ever, and it's not just the United States. You might ask yourself, well, how does this affect me? A White House official warned that during Christmas, for example, there will be things that people can't get. This is as a result of the issues that are occurring down by the docks in U.S. ports. On one day in September, there was a record of 73 ships stalled outside the L.A. port. You can imagine how this is an issue because before COVID, it was unusual that even one ship would be waiting. Let's hope another toilet paper crisis stuff happens. <laughs> What she meant to say was, let's hope that another toilet paper crisis doesn't happen again. Right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that concludes this week's broadcast. As always, we thank you all for your support. 
We hope you have an amazing weekend. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications from when we post more. We will, we will see, see you all in the next one. one. Bye! See, it was, it was, it was that easy. It was that easy. <laughs>